Hello and welcome to Bull with the Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 5, Episode 17, titled World of Trouble. <laughs> Wait a minute. In case you were wondering, where's the free fall? Huh? Assholes? Where's the free fall? You did Victims of Circumstance last week. Where's the free fall? Just a reminder, we are doing the lost episodes before getting to free fall because of story continuity. There are portions in the lost episodes that as they were written, they were supposed to air before free fall, but NBC cut the season short by three episodes and then decided not to air one at all, had a phone in so that you could people could vote for the episode they wanted to replace it. And then that was all after Freefall had come out. For story continuity, as was written in the writer's room, we are going with lost episodes, forgotten episode, or canceled episode, and then Freefall. Freefall, the, the finale. Now, and if we're being honest, these episodes that we're doing have a little bit of an asterisk because they were aired on USA. Aren't the best episodes. Like, that, like they... they clearly picked the ones that they didn't like the most to leave out of the season <laughs> i'm not saying that they hosed usa in any way but um they <laughs> didn't give them uh they got one the over gems <laughs> <laughs> yes well this episode premiered on june 14th 1989 it is written by raymond harding who also wrote Line of Fire, and he was the story editor for 16 other episodes in season five. So he's all up in season five. The director is Alan Meyerson, which all day I've been going, Ryerson, bing, like from Groundhog's Day, <laughs> but his name is Meyerson. <laughs> <laughs> he's got one more episode coming. His two episodes got put into the lost episodes. He was not welcome on NBC. Yeah, apparently not. They're like, no, you don't get any work. <laughs> I wonder if he was, like, banished to USA for the rest of his career. <laughs> Stuck writing episodes of La Femme Nikita and her notice. Dope stockings. <laughs> John, in the guest stars, there were some fantastic names. And I saw the bands who are in this week's music. And there's more fantastic names. I'm so looking forward to this music segment. What do you got for us this week? Uh, let's just start out with the one we know. Paseo de Garcia, the Alan Parsons Project. We did a pretty deep dive on the Alan Parsons Project. The first episode their music popped up in, Red Tape. If you remember, the members of the Alan Parsons Project are obviously Alan Parsons. And Eric Wolfson, who... who Give him credit, man. He was okay with him uh, with it being called the Alan Parsons Project. They're an English Scottish duo. Alan Parson was an assistant engineer and an engineer on albums The Beatles, Abbey Road, and Let It Be, as well as Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. In the mid 70s, he was working with some huge artists. And Wolfson, who was a singer, songwriter, composer, and session pianist, basically came together and said, I think we can do this as well as some of those other act, and that's how you got the Alan Parsons project, because Alan Parsons clearly had the ego. Clearly. <laughs> they would go on and make music. A lot of their music's used in movies, but we already talked about all that fun stuff. Let's get to the new music of the episode. We have Inspiration by the Gypsy Kings. The Gypsy Kings are a group of flamenco, salsa, and pop musicians from South France who perform in Andalusia, Andalusia, sorry. <laughs> this is getting good, John. I, I, I had it earlier, too. I, I nailed it before we recorded, and I knew I was going to screw it up. I was like, I got it now. <laughs> Andalusian Spanish. Although the members were born in France, their parents were mostly Gitanos, which is uh, Spanish gypsies who fled Catalonia in the 1930s during the Spanish Civil War. Even though that they were born in France, they were mostly Spanish and from families of Spanish gypsies. They were known for popularizing the Catalan rumba. So the history of it is they were formed in the 70s. They are sons of the famous flamenco artist Jose Reyes. His sons, Nicholas and Andre, teamed up with their cousins, Jacques, Maurice, and Tonino Ballardo, Balliardo, and they amazing. formed Los Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, this is this is painful. Just, and they formed the band Los Reyes. 
You have no so, choice. Like you just backed into a corner. I have to say it. The dad, Jose Reyes, was part of a duo, a famous duo. And when he left that duo, he kind of basically arranged his sons and their cousins, kind of helped them form a band. That band originally called Los Reyes would eventually become the Gypsy Kings, mostly because they started out their career as kind of a gypsy band. They played weddings and festivals and just randomly in the streets at times. And because of this, they would have changed their name to Gypsy Kings. Now, their first two albums uh, would attract very little attention, but they would start to be hired by some of the upper class parties. And no joke in in the in their Wikipedia says to add color to upper class parties. Which I, I just think that that was kind of funny. <laughs> you know, color. I, I I get what they're trying to beat around yeah. there. <laughs> they ended up finding success with their third album's the third album, the self-titled Gypsy King. <clears throat> Originally, they were popular through Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, but in 1989, Gypsy Kings was released in the U.S. It spent the first 40 weeks in the charts. Very few Spanish-speaking albums have ever done. So that that's pretty huge. And they also covered a lot of pretty famous songs. There's a cover version that they did of Hotel California. It was used for the Coen Brothers 98 classic, Big Lebowski. Mm. They also did cover version of I've Got No Strings for Disney for their Simply Mad About Mouse. They also did a cover version of, or a version of, You've Got a Friend in Me for 2010's Toy Story 3, but that was only released for their Spanish versions. So we're stuck with the Randy Newman version. The Spanish version gets the Gypsy King. <laughs> I am a slightly biased because I am actually very aware of who the Gypsy Kings are. I've actually heard Gypsy King songs. They are amazing guitarists. Their band is a mix of left and ha right handed guitars, and they're just insanely good. They are, even though I don't speak a lick of Spanish, I would go see them in concert if they ever came around. They are fantastic musicians. I could talk about albums and awards they've won in other countries. Just know that they are just fantastic guitarists and musicians. And if you like flamenco music, definitely look into the Gypsy Kings. So, yeah, and they're still going strong. I don't know that much about them, like as far as like having listened to their music. But I know they're like their fans love them, and that is an understatement. And they have they have a serious hardcore fan base. I don't know enough about guitars to explain explain to you why it's such a big deal that the band's mixed of left and right handed guitarists, but somehow like the two together is just insane. The sound that they make. John, I knew Alan Parsons' project. But I didn't know that much at all about the Gypsy King. Well, let's finally go over and give our final thoughts on this week's episode. This is, again, one of the lost episodes. It was uh, over on USA for a reason. <laughs> so I'm interested to see where everyone stands on this episode. Let's go give our final thoughts. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goewiththeheat at gmail.com. You don't really want to get your hate mail for not doing free fall. <laughs> so. so if you don't like it, too bad. No. <laughs> We know it may not be the most popular decision to do the Lost episodes now, but we felt like it would be just out of place to have a Valerie episode and close out the Lombard episode after, you know, everyone quits the Vice team and everything, you know, just kind of writing on the wall, it's going to happen to people. That's all I'm saying. If you have to put something in the comments, uh, put who your favorite additional maniac in 2001 <laughs> Maniacs is. <laughs> Be sure to check out that website, go with the heat.com. Check out all the ways to subscribe, all the ways that you can contact us, all the ways that you can support us. Support step number one, email us go with heat at gmail.com. Support step number two, go to your podcatcher platform of choice, write a review, and go ahead and write a real review this time for the show. I'm not going to tell you to do anything silly. We only have four episodes to go. We would love to see your feedback on these episodes as we look to retirement. You know, it's like a retirement party. And you get all your coworkers around that's supposed to say all the nice things about you that, and how they like to work with you. And then when you leave, they're like, oh, thank God I don't have to work with him anymore. I can, I can actually get my work done now. <laughs> we just like, you know, have those public comments so that everyone knows that this, you know, this show was okay at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> it was just okay as it could be. <laughs> Put it this way. We got to be better than a Rastafarian popsicle. <laughs> right about how much better we are than a Rastafarian <laughs> popsicle in those podcatcher reviews. 
<laughs> so we'd love to see your review. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you think of the show. With only four episodes to go, we've got three of our lost episodes and then free fall. And we'll be to the end of Miami Vice. So that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.